Today we're talking about lesson 3.10, and our learning goal today is we're going to continue adding fractions, but today the sum or the answer of the addition problem is going to be greater than 2. In our homework yesterday and in our practice yesterday, our fraction answers were between 0 and 2, right? They never worked larger than 2. It was always 1 and something, or it was just a fraction. Today we're going to see what happens when the sum is greater than 2. Okay, let's write down this math problem in our notebooks. 2 and 1 fifth plus 1 and 1 half. Now, what was that question we're always supposed to ask ourselves before we start doing any math? Itai? Um, what will our number be between? Yeah, what two whole numbers will our answer be in between? So let's just think about this. Like, let's picture, draw a quick number line. If I have 2 and 1 fifth, that's like, kind of like here, right? If I'm going to add 1 to it, I'd be right here. And if I add another half to it, I'd probably be like right here. So what two whole numbers will our answer be in between? If my answer is going to be right here, what two whole numbers is that between on the number line? Ella? Uh, 3 and 4. Okay. So a way to write that is 3 is going to be less than whatever the answer is, the sum of 2 and 1 fifth and 1 and 1 half, which will, and then the sum of that will be less than 4. It's important to know this so that when we do this, we can say, oh, is our answer reasonable or not? Okay? Okay. Now, let's see how we can make this problem easier. Is 2 and 1 fifth plus 1 and a half the same thing as 2 plus 1 plus 1 fifth plus 1 half? Is that the same thing? How come I know that 2 and 1 fifth plus 1 and a half is the same thing as 2 plus 1 plus 1 fifth plus 1 half. Alina? Um, you're breaking apart Yeah, because of the commutative property. Commutative property. I can rearrange, I can make the numbers commute from one location to another location in the number sentence. Does the value stay the same? Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that it stays the same due to the commutative property of addition. What that allows me to do is then I can add the whole numbers, 2 plus 1 equals 3, and then I have the fractions, 1 half plus 1 fifth. I can't add those yet, though, because they need to be having a common denominator. What would be the least common denominator of 1 fifth and 1 half? Reagan? 10. Ten. So what I can say is this is equal to 3. We can't forget the whole number part, right, June Buck? 3 plus 1 fifth times what version of 1 would I need to multiply 1 fifth by to get the denominator to be 10? Michael? Um, two. Is 2 a version of 1? Two, 2 doesn't equal 1, does it? But I think we know what Michael's trying to say. What is he trying to say? Sporty? Two halves. We're going to multiply 1 fifth by 2 halves, and then we can add that to 1 half multiplied by a different version of 1. What version of 1 might we want to multiply 1 half by? Anushka? Uh, 5 fifths. 5 fifths, you got it. Okay. And now our problem is 3 plus 2 tenths plus 5 tenths. Now can we add? What's 2 tenths plus 5 tenths? 7 tenths. And what's our whole number? 3. So the answer the sum of 2 and 1 fifth plus 2 and 1 half is 3 and 7 tenths. Is that what we expected when we were deciding which two whole numbers it would be in between? Yes. Yeah, 3 and 7 tenths is in between the whole numbers 3 and 4. We can feel confident that our answer makes sense. I'm here. I'm trying to get some stuff done before the weekend. So because we know that 15 plus 7 is 22, but 
5 6 plus 9 tenths is going to be at least 1 because both of those fractions are more than 1 half. We know that the lower end of our answer is going to be 23. So our answer probably will be somewhere between 23 and 24. Now let's use the commutative property to rearrange these numbers. How should I rewrite this problem so that it's easier for me to solve it? Kevin, what should I write? You got it. 15 plus 7 plus 5, 6 plus 9 tenths. It's easier when I have the whole numbers together and the fractions together because now I can add the whole numbers first. Jack, again, what's 15 plus 7? 22. So now my problem is 22 plus 5, 6 plus 9 tenths. Are we ready to add the fractions? No. We first need to have a least common denominator. Do I always find my least common denominator by multiplying the two denominators? No, because in this case, I could. Would that give you a common denominator? Yeah. yeah, it would be the CD, but would it be the L CD? No. In this case, is 60 the least common denominator? There's a common de denominator that's even more least, right? That's leaster. What common denominator is the least common denominator? Reagan? 30. Okay. So let's do that. Let's rewrite. Let's write out our multiplication equations. We can't forget the whole number. So we have to write 22 plus 5, 6 times some version of 1 will help us to get the LCD of 30 at the bottom. What version of 1 do I want to multiply 5, 6 by? Aditya? 5 fifths. 5 fifths. You got it. Oops. 5 fifths, not 5, 6. Good. Write it down. And then our next fraction is 9 tenths. We also want to multiply that by some version of 1 to get us a denominator of 30. Vasish, what version of 1 should we use? 3 thirds. 3 thirds. Cool. 1 is cool. 1 takes on a million different forms. Depending on whatever we need. It's so accommodating, right? Okay, now let's write it out. We have 22 plus 5 times 5 is? 25. So we have 25 thirtieths plus 9 times 3 is? 27 thirtieths. Good. Let's do our addition. We have 22 as our whole number. What's 25 plus 27? Jim Buck? So we have 52 thirtieths. Now, is that an improper fraction? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to take away a whole, which is how many, how many thirtieths make one whole? 30. So if I take away 30 of those thirtieths and I add it to my 22, how many holes do I have now? 23. And how many thirtieths are left? 22 thirtieths. Now, is that in simplest form? How do we know that 22 thirtieths is not in simplest form, Aditi? It can be divided by 2. Ah, it can all be divided by, both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 2. So, let's do it. 23. What's 22 divided by 2? 11. 11. And then what's 30 divided by 2? 15. So, our final answer is 23 and 11 fifteenths. Does that fit with what we expected? Is it in between the whole numbers 23 and 24? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we can feel good and confident about our answer. At least trying yes, trying being the key word. And then also, Audrey's supposed to come talk to me about my parent. Well. But I don't know where she is. <laughs> she was supposed to come at 4, but she's not here. Oh, really? Yeah, in the room. Oh. She told me she'd come by around 4. But Michaela was out for a second. I was like, by chance, are all the principals in there? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I'm like, I think you should come by. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I guess they haven't all been together in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you here? Oh, nice. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to wait here until, like, and I usually try to send out my weekly email. Oh, yeah. I can't believe you do that and you do the, um... Fan folder? Yeah. It's, like, a lot. I know! So that's why if I ever have a parent could complain that I do not come in up with them, I'm like, here, look at all this shit. But don't you do, don't you have the kids write their weekly letters? I do. Then I thought that to me the reason why I thought that was so genius is because it takes the point takes the place of writing any updates. Uh yeah, but then I also I don't know. I just 
don't know. I mean, I dude. So I my first I year. Email because no, I did a weekly email before where I just give them like upcoming events. Oh. Sometimes. Yeah, but there's not always upcoming events. Yeah, and then like I think then when Melinda, when Melinda up for me, uh -huh. she started setting out these things. Oh gosh. And then like somehow I don't know why I just can I either I continue because I came back and took over for her mm -hmm. and my parents were asking me about it. I was like, 